So Salt Creek is located in the Arolas area in the Needles District of Canyonlands National Park. The headwaters of the creek originate in uh, the north side of the Ubaha Mountains, so not too far away, and it terminates at its confluence with the Colorado River to the north. Um, the park itself is managed as wilderness, and the Salt Creek within the park was um, established as a, um, uh, an archaeological district in the 1970s. Uh, in 2009, there was a site condition and uh, a site, sorry, site documentation and condition assessment project. Um, I, I myself was part of the, the field crew, as were a number of the people who worked on the project this year and next year. Um, we recorded a total of 25 sites, 24 of those 25 are P4, or excuse me, P2, P3, um, and the majority of them were habitation sites, uh, with even more of them being uh, storage sites as well. Uh, there was also a great deal of rock art. Um, during the project, we recorded uh, 66 rooms um, oh, in the course of those 25 sites, and uh, part of the project was that we uh, made recommendations for future work particularly pertaining to the architecture. This project uh, was, is the first year of a two-year two project that um, is following up on some of those recommendations. And seven sites in total were, um, were targeted for additional work. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit now to talk about wilderness. Um, so there are five qualities of wilderness, and they are that wilderness is substantially free from the effects of modern civilization. It encourages um, solitude and recreation that is unconfined and primitive. It is essentially without permanent development. It is essentially free from modern human impact, and it has unique scientific, educational, scenic, or historical value. These five qualities can sometimes be contradictory, um, and when you throw into the mix a really complex um, uh, historical and cultural landscape like Salt Creek is, it can be even more difficult to manage um, holistically, but that was the goal of this project. Um, so when we went into the field, one of the things that we were really concerned about was how to address the sites that we had targeted um, in a manner that was consistent with the principles of wilderness. Um, so to ensure that we did that, we uh, employed a number of methods um, that were consistent with um, wilderness practice and principles. The first thing that we did was we backpacked into the project area, which took about a day each way, and it also meant that we had to carry in all of the work that we used over the course of the site season, so we carried in buckets and trowels and trimbles and SLR digital cameras and all sorts of good stuff, in addition to all of our regular backpacking gear um, and our food for a week. We also administratively camped so that we wouldn't uh, infringe on the wilderness experience that the visitors of the park would have. Um, so specifically in regards to the archaeological sites and the architecture, the standing architecture, we were really conser uh, conservative in determining what to stabilize. Um, we really uh, thought about what was gained by stabilizing both on a site level, on a, uh, on a structure level, and on a wall level. If there was um, only a, a really minimal gain to uh, stabilize, stabilizing, or no gain at all, we used other tactics. And this year, was the, uh, we focused primarily on those other tactics. So we conducted more in-depth architectural documentation at 21 rooms. Um, and in addition to that, we did um, more extensive photographing, including uh, the, the use of a 3D, model, 3D photo modeling program, uh, which was a very intensive photographing process that was probably 50 pictures per room. <laughs> so um, it was a pretty interesting endeavor and something that we're still kind of working through. Um, one of the really interesting things about the 3D photo modeling is that um, this is a new program for the Southeast Utah Parks, so the, the results that we get from our 3D photo modeling uh, will have implications, not just for other archaeological resources in the Southeast Utah Parks, but also for um, um, ecological and other natural um, resources. So it has pretty, uh, we're kind of the, the pioneer project for this potential really useful program. Um, one of the other things that we did this year is we uh, looked into water sources because we're working within, with, under the guidance of wilderness principles, we wanted to make sure that our mortar sourcing was very non-invasive. So we uh, obtained soil from the drainage bottoms um, and uh, mixed and 
did the, sh the soil test and the soil, soil shaking on site and where we needed to do additional work, we hiked out the, the, the dirt for additional work. Um, and so we determined uh, a couple of sources for, for mortar, mortar for, that will primarily be used next year. Um, and one of the challenges was, was finding soil that had a sufficient amount of clay. Um, obviously they could do it a thousand years ago, so we should be able to manage it to some degree this year and next year. Um, so next year, one of the plans is to do uh, minimal, uh, minimally invasive stabilization on a total of 16 rooms. And presently, the treatment plan for that, for that um, uh, stabilization is in the works. Um, and we, again, with, uh, with the, man uh, the management ideals of wilderness, we're being uh, very light-handed. So uh, if the mortar is unamended, we will be using um, um, microspheres this upcoming year so that as a, as a marker to determine our very recent mortar versus the prehistoric mortar. Um, one of the things that's really cool about our mortar sourcing and, and the process of this year is that even though um, there's been a great deal of stabilization at other south, southwest or excuse me southeast Utah group parks and even within the Salt Creek uh, drainage um, all of those mortars have been um, amended and so this is the first year that we're using an unamended mortar and while that's probably very common in a lot of other places in the southwest this is very new for us. Um, also next year there will be a site to be tested. There is a, a pretty active drainage that goes right by the site and it's exposing um, some intact cultural deposits so we're going to be testing there and again with the ideals of, of, of wilderness in mind uh, it will be a very non-invasive as much as possible um, limited testing project. Um, there's a site in Salt Creek that is very heavily visited and uh, sometime a while ago there was an illegal excavation of uh, a number of cysts, probably on the order of 20 or 30 cysts, um, that are just exposed now and uh, because the site has so much visitation the, the cysts are receiving a substantial amount of trampling so one of our challenges next year will be to um, rebury those cysts in a way that is um, um, protects them as, as much as possible while still being non-invasive and allowing for the recreation of the site because there's just no way to keep people out of it, unfortunately. <coughs> um, we'll also be doing conservation work at two rock art panels that are um, being impacted by water runoff and erosion. Um, so one of the things that was really cool about this year is that this is the 50th anniversary of both Canyonlands National Park and the Wilderness Act. And I think I can speak for pretty much everyone who's been involved in the project because we all came back from 2009, that Salt Creek is a tremendous resource. It's a beautiful place and we are so incredibly lucky to be able to work there. And I think if you were to ask any of us, we would all say that it's a place that's very deep, deeply entrenched in our hearts for the better or for worse. Um, this year we, we had all sorts of, of issue with whether there was a snake in my backpack at some point. <laughs> um, but even with all of the challenges and, and the, you know, the heat and hiking out a thousand feet of elevation, it's, it's always worth it. It's such a beautiful place. The archaeology is so amazing. And um, 50 years of celebration of, of that resource, of that place, I think is a really special thing. So, thank you. Oh,